Normally, blood clots form in response to injuries which cause bleeding. Clot formation helps to conserve the body's supply of blood so that small cuts don't end up draining the body of all of its blood. The body's process for stopping the bleeding by forming a clot is called hemostasis. In this illustration, the blood vessel contains red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, and tiny proteins called clotting factors. These components of the blood float together in a straw-colored liquid called plasma. When the vessel wall is torn open by an injury, blood begins to escape. In response to this damage, the vessel quickly constricts, reducing the flow of blood. This constriction lasts only for a few minutes as the body puts in place a plug to stop the bleeding. Platelets soon recognize the injury and begin to stick to the damaged surfaces. This is called platelet adhesion. The adhering platelets change shape and release chemicals which keep the vessel constricted and draw more platelets into the damaged area. These platelets are said to be activated. Additional platelets arrive and begin to stick to one another so that a loose plug is formed. This is called platelet aggregation. When tissue is torn apart during an injury, blood is exposed to a chemical called tissue factor, which naturally resides on the surface of tissue cells, or may also be displayed on the inner lining of the blood vessel wall. This tissue factor sets into motion the chemical reactions of the clotting factors found floating in the nearby blood. Around a dozen different chemicals called clotting factors circulate inactively within the blood. When called upon, these clotting factors participate in a complex sequence of chemical reactions to ultimately produce tiny strands of a strong material called fibrin. Fibrin strands form in and around the loosely arranged plug of platelets and eventually form a meshwork which tightly binds the plug together. This meshwork keeps the platelets from being washed away by the flow of blood and makes the platelet plug more watertight. Red blood cells and white blood cells become trapped in the meshwork as it forms, giving the plug its characteristic red color. The overall process of forming these fibrin strands to solidify the clot is called coagulation. So within a matter of minutes, a sturdy plug is formed to arrest the outflow of blood, but too much coagulation activity allows the clot to grow much larger than it should. Two groups of the body's own naturally produced chemicals help to limit the size of the clot. The first group blocks coagulation. These substances are known as coagulation inhibitors or natural anticoagulants. When these chemicals interfere with the reactions among the clotting factors, fibrin formation is blocked and no new fibrin strands are available to hold additional cells to the clot. In this way, clot growth is kept to a minimum. The other group of chemicals keeps clot growth under control by cutting the fibrin strands and actually dissolving part of the clot. These chemicals are part of the natural process known as fibrinolysis. Fibrinolysis occurs as chemicals called plasminogen activators are slowly released from the inner lining of the damaged vessel wall. These plasminogen activators trigger the destruction of the fibrin strands that hold the clot together. So coagulation inhibitors can only stop the growth of the clot, but fibrinolysis can actually dissolve part or all of the clot. In fact, when the vessel is completely healed, the remaining clot is dissolved by means of this second group of chemicals. To sum up then, rapid clot formation is essential for conservation of the body's supply of blood. We've seen the constriction of an injured blood vessel, the formation of a platelet plug, the strengthening of that plug by the addition of fibrin strands, and the body's protective systems preventing excessive clot growth.